doing today, but it's more to bring up interest. Oh, here's this like little fun fact. And then what he's asking the people to start doing with whatever social media outlets we use, if you then share that post on your site, like keep it moving. You know, when he puts something up, it's only going to go so far. And the tip is to keep cross sharing. Because then one of your friends might, one of your followers is like, I remember the fountain, and then they share it on their page, and that's kind of how you start keeping these. I mean, if you're on Facebook at all, you see it, it's like that's how suddenly there's a million clicks and some like cat having babies video. You know? It's like, it just kind of starts doing this viral sharing. So that was his kind of. He's really trying to set it. I just have a question about that. Yeah. Would it be better to share it from your business page or your personal page or both? Something, you know, see, and that's a tough thing. That's something I'm going to talk about today, the personal versus the professional. Yeah. You know, there's certain things, certainly, that I think sharing on both is fine. Certain ones that it should just be a professional. Like, your friends will maybe unfriend you because they get tired of seeing or they just won't even pay attention anymore because they've seen it so many times. Um, and certainly for the reverse. If it's, oh my god, our friend just had a baby. It should probably be a personal. No, but I guess I was wondering yeah. if the Saturday market Yeah, says, I would say... Should, I suppose we could bump it you know, on our person, personal one and on our business. Yeah, one. yeah. And then something that I noticed that Todd tessimer has been doing is he's, he's been pretty active on the our... Our uh, editor, who? Facebook, Todd Tesmer. Oh, yeah. About, okay, I'm going to share something about Uli, and I'm going to put all the little tags in there with the contacts to his pages, to his website, on my pages to see then if I can get more traction going to his site. Not really going to help me necessarily as much as I'm trying to help a fellow vendor. Just to get more traffic, it's called, going to their site. And then his big thing, oh sorry, go ahead. Is that what he's been doing uh, on Facebook where yeah. you do two people and Get test to, it? He yeah, was so like he was testing oh, he, nice. um, He's also trying to test out the time of day to post and which days to post. So there's all this information on the internet. I didn't put it in that little form because it's pretty easy to find online. It's almost like, they say like booking a... An airline's flight, it's best to do it on Tuesday and Wednesday, so that's when the prices are going to be down, there's going to be less traffic on the website. Same thing with social media. There's certain times of the week that people are, usually it's Thursday, Friday, as they see the weekend coming, and they're just like, I don't want to be at work, and I'll look through anything I want to look through. So that's also something Todd was testing, just like, if I put it on at 3 o'clock, is it better than 10 a.m.? Uh -huh. I'm not going to go into a lot of that, that's just like, yeah. We just need to like figure out how to start doing this like well and not <laughs> with an advanced course on this. <laughs> um, but Reed's other big thing was we put a lot of money and time into our new website. And so I did a little test thing and went through our website because he keeps talking about this at the board meeting. It's like you have to fill out your pages on the website. So we each have a little personal page there. Uh, and it's how many of you guys have your own websites? Okay, it's almost everyone. That's great. That's, that's actually really great. You don't. Okay, well that's, and that's part of what our website is for. You don't need to have your own website. You have one right there. You can put the link even on your business card, on all your social media. On the Portland website, you can have a link to all the social medias. He's begging for people, and if you know other people who aren't as tech savvy, to please help them. Photos, a description, at least an email. Um, I'm a little bit less inclined to put phone numbers unless it is solely your business phone number. You know, that might just be me. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to think my mom's calling and like, oh my god, and then it's a new business contact. It just feels really uncomfortable. Because I always think like emails are great and people are really comfortable. And that's what all social media is. It's like this wall in between having to like meet you face to face or talk to you on the phone, but to be a little bit. I can say all these things I want in this email. And it's like So he's just begging, begging, begging to 
please go in there and update it. I even printed out a Jana Are there a lot of people who haven't filled their seat? So, Hi, Mike. Uli and Lisa Mio, yeah. Was that ever here? No, I mean, uh, so this is what Uli's page on the website looks like, you know. Just, and he has multiple photos, but it's a big, beautiful, up-close photo with a description of what he does. With all his links on the side. Then I printed out who love her to pieces. I printed out this is what Earthlight's page looks like. So there's this, all these words, no picture. So she goes into this huge description about these rocks and rocks and rocks. And I'm like, I didn't even know you were selling rocks because I can't see that you're selling rocks here. So this is this is Reed's push to the difference. Visual aids are so important. You know? So and he wants so to put together a workshop during the week at some point where we all come with our laptops and all the stuff we're going to be talking about. We actually sit down and have four hours of like doing this, and Prairie said she can involve too, just to help, like, building up photos, and so we can't do all that. Did here. You know? I was going to say, I, I have pictures yeah. on, on the website, and I've had customers actually see my pictures and seek me out because I have mm -hmm. pictures on there. Yeah. So it does It help. does help. Because people be will go like, oh, well, what kind of vendor, what kind of things are they selling? Um, it's a way for them to decide if they're going to come or not. Absolutely. All right, so that was Reed's piece. So now you guys can say that I. What do you want me to say? Um, Whatever else. We need to do just a little bit of work. For the people who just came in, we were just uh, we just went ahead and started talking to you all here. We're just talking down to see if you'd like to get those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you want to set a chair up here? Oh no, I can't. We're filming. It's comfortable. It's really nice. I bring the chair. Okay, so. Okay. All right, so. So I'm going to start. What's that? Oh. I think we got it. Okay, so now we're ready for Jessica's Soleil's. Thank you so much, Jessica. We're super excited to hear from you. Okay, all right, and stop me at any time if I'm Amy. kind of going on a tangent. All right, let's get comfortable. So, two things to start. One, I wrote this last night and then edited it, and then when I went to print it, I printed my original version. <laughs> it was just my me going. Also, there's going to be a ton of spelling errors, and just bear with me on that. I'm sorry. Printed the wrong version. Yeah, but there's like, yeah, you'll find that. Okay. Later, so. And then second, so I told my fiancé that I was going to be doing this talk today on social media, and he laughed out loud. Um, because I, I think he's heard my lecture about how much I resent social media. One too many times, he's like, you're the one who's already doing it? Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the truth is, a lot of what I'm going to say, I don't even do. I know I need to be doing it. But, so I'm right there with you on a lot of these things. But it's just, sometimes it's just too much. It's just too much. It's just too much happening. So, that I'm going to lead to... We need to pick one to start, one of the social media outlets, and do it well. Drop all your other ones, get them off of there, focus on one, and do it well. Then as you get the hang of that one and are updating regularly, then you can add on a second social media. I think there's this push these days to have on your website, on your business card, you know, on the Portland Starting Market website, like all these links. Like, I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have Pinterest, I have this. But if you're not actively using them, it's it looks it reflects poorly. So then they're like, oh my gosh, they're on Twitter, and then they go to your Twitter, and you're like, and it says, welcome to Twitter, because you've never posted a single thing, and it's now they just, and then they might just stop and be like, all right, I'm not gonna take. 
I'm not going to go now check their Instagram and check their one. So it could be a waste of time. Yeah, it is, and they just kind of like not see it. So at the beginning of what I wrote out, I, I kind of focus on little explanations of Facebook. Is everyone pretty familiar with Facebook? Yeah. Um, okay. So how many people have a personal Facebook page? Pretty much. Okay. Most of you. How many have a business page? Sweet. Okay. Which one do you use more? Personal. Personal. <laughs> exactly. Me too. Business. All right. Okay. So that, yeah, see that's very reflective. So for those who don't have the Facebook pages, on our personal, people have to friend us. Like they have to request it, or some people have open ones. I have a private one. Request it, and then we say, yes, I want to be your friend. That's great. Sometimes we're like, oh, I'll politely just never answer that. <laughs> like, let it be. And then with our professional, people can just like your page. And once they like your page, they start following you. It starts going into their news feed. I have mixed feelings about Facebook. I'm sure all of you do as well. This kind of, I notice that it's, it's a massively smart computer system. And it decides what it wants you to see. So just because you like people's pages and you're friends with people, you might never see one of their posts in, in your news feed. And it's because Facebook's figuring out what, what you click on, what you tend to like, where you tend to go, and it's only going to feed you those. Therefore, and then all the advertisements they've started putting on there. Like, it goes into the memory bank of your computer and goes, oh, oh she just looked up uh, Macy's. You know, and then suddenly you're going to have all these ads of furniture and clothing sales. So it makes me a little bit frustrated. <laughs> Jessica, do they do that when you're on Facebook and you click those? They don't. They don't figure that out when you're on Facebook. They have Facebook. access to you. Yeah, they do. Your computer's called cookies. Every time you Google a single thing on the internet, it's it, it's there for eternity. At Facebook, one of the things you grant access to when you're on Facebook because no one tends to read the 50-page legal thing of a. Yeah. These are what you're agreeing to. I mean. I try sometimes and I, I get like three pages in. I can't do it. Agree, agree. Yeah, no, they go. They know everything you do. Anything you do on the internet, it will always be there. I don't care if you delete it from your history, it's always there. So keep that in mind. <laughs> it's scary, but it's true. Um, so now, Instagram. Who has, the, who has the Instagram account? Okay, so now it's Minnie. So I'm going to focus a lot on Instagram today. I think it's, especially for what we do, the visual arts, it's a really great resource. Facebook, you can write things, you can, you know, attach links to other, what I'm trying to think of, like news articles, you can do that. Instagram is all photo-based. You have room there to, to write comments afterwards, but in order to post on Instagram, you're going to post, start with a picture. So when people scroll through, is this like Facebook, where you get comments back on it, or is it just where yeah, you post people can comment it? on it and I'm trying to do it just gonna bring it fine. You guys, oh, oh, look through my Instagram. Oh, That's not me. These are other people. You can scroll up and down. So what you do with Instagram is you post a picture, you can write a comment about it, and it's the success of Instagram is using hashtags. I'm being so disruptive. That is a problem. I don't want to get those. You can hear one. A terror in your face. <laughs> 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 um, I'm just showing people. I don't even know if you posted on Instagram. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so with Instagram, you can put a picture, you can write an explanation, and I have it in here, and then you use hashtags. So hashtags have become the means of social media. Um, I have a whole definition. I probably won't be able to explain it as well. It's on the back side of this. A hashtag is kind of a, it's a way to find something. You can actually search the 
via Twitter or Instagram just for a hashtag. So let's say I'm looking for, what, what was your last mosaic? Mosaic. Mosaic. I could write in, in the search column on Instagram, write hashtag mosaics. And just, there's just going to be thousands of photos that come up where people use the hashtag to link it. So for someone like me who is like, ooh, I want like, new ideas for mosaics. And I can go through to see all these photos. That's how we how we use it. I know it's a little bit confusing. Do you actually write hashtag the no, word? The, the pound, 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 pound sign. Pound sign. Pound sign. Pound sign. Pound no spaces in any of the words. Yeah, so okay. I will say it in here. All okay. lowercase, no spaces, no apostrophes, no. So is that a very simple? You know, you get like all of these. Yeah. yeah. Number pounds. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's what they're doing. It's so that, and Twitter is the one who actually started this. Twitter is the one where it's just words. You get 180 characters to say, like, you know, I love wearing sweatpants. And <laughs> hashtag sweatpants. Hashtag rainy day. Hashtag sitting on my couch. Hashtag, like, anything you can think of. So that's where Twitter started because they were, where hashtag started. Because with Twitter, you're limited to just this many uh, characters to say something, so then you can add on all these hashtags to say more. Like, oh. hashtag grandma's, hashtag like, oh. Are there spaces between the words, or is it all no. dense? All dense. Um, Here's a bunch of examples right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, just a pound sign between space. My most it's successful friends friend or people I know on Instagram who have businesses, they kind of have this set group of hashtags that they use. And I don't know how they, if they write them out every time. I think what they do is like, use like the note section in your iPhone, go in, write it all there, and then every time copy it and then paste it back. I can't imagine. Yeah, once you kind of start writing, it has this memory thing. But that's what I'm yeah. Okay, so that so the, the followers, so this is where it comes from. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is where it's been. So I did a test experiment this week to help with this, to, to help explain the hashtag. So some of you see, well, I don't know if you know. I have a painting of, of hops jumping in the air. It's one of it's called Hop to You Drop. Okay. So I saw that it's Portland's brewer stuff right now. Um, so I went in and I started scrolling through all Instagram things thinking that I, I typed in Portland Brewers Fest, uh, Brew Fest 2015, PDX Brew, just as, and then went through and clicked on photos and then wrote down all the hashtags that people were using. So then, normally I would just like put my hop spread on there and be like, oh, isn't it cute? Like, hashtag a little sub. So this time, I basically stole all their hashtags using the advertising from Portland's Brewer Fest, which is a massive, massive festival, like international. I found as many as I could, and then I posted my hop sprint, said hop to you drop, you know, come on down to Port Sunny Market, then hashtag Brewer's Fest, hashtag Portland Beer, hashtag, like, which is on, I know. <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, it's, it's on the back, but. Did you do that in Instagram it. or Facebook? I call it stealing. <laughs> far out, far out. <laughs> That's how you're going to get more followers. Mm -hmm. It's not about my mom liking my art. It's not about my third grade friend who I just never have seen since third grade, but it's my friend on Facebook. It's not about them. It's about strangers. We gotta be cutthroat. We can work ahead. What do you call cutthroat or college? Hey, isn't all archive? Yeah. That's my thing. Okay, so it's like adding keywords and search words to your website. Finding your website. Yeah, but the website, like, not the world. I knew I couldn't get to all of that. Yeah, finding your same ideas, just keywords. It's like on Etsy, same thing, like looking at this type So I did this experiment. I put it on. Sure, I had. I mean, it wasn't like a crazy amount. I've had like 25 likes. But of the like, 10 are people I know, pretty much like every. I don't, I don't know what they need to just like, sit around and go like, 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 I don't really, like, no matter what I put on there, they're going to like it. Then I had the other 15 are complete strangers in the world. I have no idea how they, you know, they liked it. And, now, and then I got five new followers because of that. So that's what you need. That's what this is about. So these like or scholars, does it translate in sales then? Yeah, so now so now these people are gonna 
Yeah, that's my piece. That was the picture. I thought I was going to see that. Um, so now these people are going to start following me. And then they will start getting online sales, get people down to Portland Saturday Market. That's how we go out and buy things. Same but doesn't their friend see that they liked your page? So then it just that's more so on Facebook, on Instagram. Okay. It's, it's not, not quite as much. But they can reshare it if they want to, which is what you kind of hope for. And another mechanism to start getting more followers is to buy them. I don't know how else to put that. <laughs> um, there's two other ways. There's two ways to buy them. One is you actually can physically pay a company that will give you 40,000 followers. Whether that translates to how many sales, they basically pay people to just friend people. What's the cost? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, there's all sorts of different ones. Like 5,000 5, new followers, 10,000, 100,000. I have friends who from Los Angeles, and I have friends who are actually, you know, they're pretty successful and famous in their own right. They still bought followers when they started their new business. But they, yeah. if you buy followers, is it a certain group of followers or the, the street people out here that are getting paid? We would have no idea. Okay. It's probably a bunch of 12 year olds sitting <laughs> <laughs> in their house that they're, you know what I mean? And they all go, what are you but what, in, but yeah. what the hell that works though is things like Facebook. Okay, even if they are 12 year olds, it's still exposure. It's still, they're going to be liking it, and the more you get higher up in the search engines with the more traffic you have driven to your page. So it doesn't matter if they don't ever buy anything from you, you're still going to be more searchable. You're still mm -hmm. going to get there. So that's one way. Second way is what I do. And I kind of just started doing this, so I, I get to see. Um, I buy them with a discount. I'm like, like, friend me on Facebook or you know, on Instagram, and you get 10% off your next purchase. How do you track that? How do I track that? Yeah, how do so you... When they, so when they, when I tell them to, to, to like me and then use a certain hashtag. Mine is, um, is uh, a little fun, is what it's, I just put a plague on my name. So then I know that they're a person who either already purchased something from me because it's in I don't really tell them at the market like here do this inside like my prints and inside my greeting cards I just have a little card that has explanation about my artwork and then also friend me on Instagram use use hashtag this and I'll send you a discount code to use on my website or personal so I got about I would say 20 on my on like online and then a couple at the market, they come back and are like, and then a couple really smart ones who are there, they like read it, and they're like, can I use it now? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then this, but it's cool, because they'll sit there in front of me, and they'll like be on their phone, and they'll find me, and they'll be like, see? But it's great, you know? And then, so once I get, yeah, so I mean, that's another way, too. I'm not saying that these are the only way, these are just tools that you can possibly use. Um, Mm -hmm. So I can barely read this because it's so small. <laughs> how much time a day do you spend on social media and okay. how yeah. much of your business would you, you know, say? Okay, so then this is what Reed was talking about too. So like decide right now which which social media outlet do I want to focus on first. It could be different for everyone. I'm saying really think about like what do you want to focus on right now? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? No, think about that. Okay. Pretend like the other ones don't exist. Start with a realistic game plan. Um, like Reed has, you know, he does the, I don't like the whole like throwback Thursday things. I just feel like it's a trend and whatever. But come up with your own. I think I put on here a schedule. Don't do it every day, because then you'll get people who are just like, oh, I'm so tired of their scene and stuff. Um, maybe start with like Monday, you know? What, what's the saying about Mondays? It's Maker's Monday. Yeah. Well, no, but like, what, what's that feeling about Monday mornings? What is Boy that? Monday. Yeah. Like, so give them something to like make them feel better that day. Maybe that's the day that you, um, you give insight to like your studio. 
what some, a shot of what you're doing in your studio, cool. the mess in your of like your van after the Saturday market, something a little bit made me more personal. Um, people want to relate to you, and it's gonna add to sales. Um, they want to see little bits of your life. Obviously, they don't want to know about the surgery you just had. <laughs> They kind of want to feel like they're a part of your art form, a part of what you're doing. Uh, I'm not opposed to using my dog sometimes. Like, it's Monday, just good thing I have my dog to keep, you know, like, there's a little bit of that. So, what I'm trying to say is, is create your own outline and stick to it. Don't, we all know individually how much extra time we have realistically. Mine's really small. I, I know if I try too much, I get so frustrated that I stop doing it for a month. So, you start with whatever it is. You know, and then as it, the week goes on, maybe Thursday, because it's, you know, we're prepping up to people making plans for the weekend. Maybe put then a photo of your new product or some sort of deal that you're having, or, yeah, create that. And it doesn't need to be more than 15 minutes at a time. Just do it. Make sure you're consistent. I can't stress that enough. Just make sure you're consistent. Yeah. You know, the people we talked to in our booth, they're the ideal mm -hmm. people already connected. Do you, uh, you ask for their email, or is there a way to get the Square I, emails back to us? To uh, Square has a thing if, if, they're, if they bought from you five times with their credit card, then you have access to their email. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just signed this up. That. Yeah. So you, and then, so if you go, I can't really do it on the app on my phone, but when I'm at home on the computer and I go into Square, okay. it shows me, and I only have like two emails, because it's like I only have two people that have actually bought for me. Because usually it's tourists, so like we don't get that. You can do the emails in your booth, but start using that you have one of these, like start using that you like, you know, what's your Instagram name? Start following them. Maybe, I don't try it. See how that goes. I feel uncomfortable doing that because I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little weird, but I, I, this is such a desensitized way of communication that I don't see. Whereas email, sometimes people are like, I don't want another like newsletter in my inbox, like another email I have to delete. Well, and, and a lot of us put uh, something else yeah. in the bags when they're buying something. Yeah. With your it's like a business card, yeah. add it to the business card. Any it, of it's those a little bit easier. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to say that. So, okay, we're talking about timeline and how to do this. Um, All right, yes, yeah, so do it, do it well, do it consistently. And when someone does like your page, or so on Instagram, when I did the Brewers Fest thing, and then when it was a stranger who they didn't like start following me, but they liked it, I went to their page and I started liking a bunch of their random photos. You know, just so they're like, oh, who's this? And then it kind of, people get, get really funny and they're like, oh, oh, you're going to be kind of stalking me, I'm going to stalk you too. It's great. Like, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think I even put it in here, like, stalk people. Like, you know, not in a totally creepy way, but just be like, oh my god, I love your photo. I have one, or I have a necklace just like that. You know, and tag them in that picture. All right, so when I say tag, that's something confusing too. The app symbol, like in our emails, that on Instagram, if you put, if we're somebody, you put hashtag, you know, Carlos Art, it goes there. Um, if you use at and then a, a, a username, like my name is a little son art. So if Lizzie was to put a post up and put at a little son art, it's going to go into my feed. It's like I'm going to be tagged in it. So it's a way to kind of like, direct a photo at a person. So I did that too with the Brewer's Fest thing. At Rogue, at Dunda, at, you know, all the different ones just to get it, see more. So there's hashtags and then the app symbol. It's a different one. Um, okay, so on the back page, I put a just tell me what to do kind of list. What I'm gonna suggest, sorry, I'm for you, is it's like a little bit of homework. Um, we all know some other businesses that are similar to ours. I wouldn't suggest 
other members of the Port Setting Market because a lot of what we do is the same in terms of advertisement online. Uh, I would go into, people know Etsy. Um, yeah. Etsy is a place for us to sell and have a free web, free web page to sell your, your work. I go in there and I find, this is what you're talking about, and I find other businesses that are pretty similar to mine, so I do illustrations, I find, but I find really successful ones. You know, people who have 60,000 sales on Etsy, you know, and then, and then I stop them. It's amazing. I, I go into their website, I, I read their blog, I look at, I just Google them and see what, which companies are advertising them. And I steal them. I do. I'm, I'm like, no shame. And then I start using their hashtags. And I start using, like, oh, wow, this person featured them in their blog. I'm going to try to, like, send a little something to that person and see. This is, like, how it works. It feels really uncomfortable, but this is how social media works. It's building upon and building upon and building upon. And much information out there. It's like, how is someone going to find us? We have to go find them. It's kind of like my biggest feeling. Yeah, so I, I've, I've done that. I have a list at home of info that I've taken off of other people's websites. And obviously, I'm, I'm not stealing their products at all. It's, it's oh, how, what words are they using besides illustration? You know, what else could I be calling this? Like there's all these words right now that are so trendy, the DIY, and the refurb, and the blah, 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 blah. These are really trending words. And you can actually go on Instagram, and you can search like the most used hashtags and stuff to find like, what, what words are selling. Just because I call it, you know, illustrations that feel like a hug, no one's going to go searching for that, because that's just what I call it. Uh, start with using some of these resources. Uh, does that make sense at all? I know it's a lot. I know it sounds like too much. It makes sense, but your basic premise was you went, your ideal idea was to go to the Brewers Festival, pick up the hashtags mm -hmm. that they were using. Yep. Then you have a product which is Brewers Festival specific. It is beer and hops going yep. together in a pretty picture. Absolutely. That should have a major interest for most of those people interested in murders mm -hmm. at Absolutely. some point or another. So I, I would like to focus on how you how you determine from those hashtags what type of an audience you are getting. What type of audience? Yeah. People who drink beer. No, <laughs> right? So I'm thinking about like the gnomes. So obviously you're not going to use the brewer's test. How many of these like little niche events are there, or like shops and people who collect garden gnomes, and, and maybe it's it's a big garden festival that's happening, or it's the, the Renaissance. Like, try to find your own like what kind of people would buy my stuff, and where do they go? I was thinking, I was thinking more that creators uh, shooting videos of individual vendors, mm -hmm. and it goes from pottery. To uh, metal sculpture, to uh, and in my mind, that shooting to interest you in there in in sharing that on your website. Right, right. And I can't think of any reason why you would be interested in sharing in sharing someone uh, pottery on my pottery on your website. Uh, yeah, that's the point. Support. <laughs> I mean, it all, I mean, that specifically, I feel like, gets down to marketing the Saturday market, which helps us all. Um, if someone's coming down to see uh, Trisha's paintings, I'm hoping that they're going to then pass my booth and want to buy one of my paintings. So I think that's like, and I know Reed was talking to me a lot about that last week, and like, that is something we have to remember, is, is helping each other will help us all. Like, I love it when people have huge selling days even if I didn't talk to someone for five hours just because it means there's people coming down here spending money and I don't have a resentment towards that. 
So, are you wondering like how to get more of us to start sharing? Yeah. 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 That's what we really want. You know. <laughs> what do you wanted me to say? Like, but he's like, I can only do so far. I can just post, and then it's up to each other to kind of push it further. If I see that Carla's doing a, an event, I see that maybe I should share it on my page. I'd be like, look at this cool event. It's something else to do. I say that, and then I also have a feeling of we all have to decide individually if we're kind of want to focus on our own business or we want to focus on the artist community as a whole. And I'm not judging either way, but that's an individual decision that I. It's, it's going to be different for everyone. Um, yeah. I think one of the reasons that we may have that problem is because so many of us have. As we raise our hands, some of us have personal pages, but we don't put as much emphasis on our business page. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of the friends that I have on my personal page are Saturday market people. And right. I don't really want to so be all just, just repeating it all, you know? We're all the same feeds. And, and so <laughs> I think we need to emphasize more, spending more yeah. time on the business page. Yeah. But unfortunately, when I go over and put stuff on my business page, I've let it go so long, I get maybe like <laughs> five, five views, likes. you know? Yeah. I know, because it I needs know. to be built up. That's so that's what we need to all start sharing. There. Like, if you're not using it, just stop. Like stop using your business and focus on one of the other social medias. So, all right, can you use hashtags only on Instagram and Twitter, or can you integrate it into Facebook? You, you, do you can do it on Facebook. They kind of jumped on that bandwagon a bit. And and. People looking for the hashtag will also see the Facebook. I don't know. On Facebook, you can just I won't, search I, a hashtag. I've resisted using hashtags so long because <laughs> I didn't want to be a hashtag. I know. It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm breaking down. I think now. that is the issue with a lot of us. I feel it too. Because we purposely are doing what we're doing because we don't want to go with the masses. So now we're, like, we're kind of like, oh, God, i got to use the masses. And, <laughs> So, I don't know, that's how I feel. So in the Facebook you just integrate it in, in the text? Yeah, in like in your in your post on oh, there. Uh, and I think I stressed it a couple times in here. That is important to separate in your personal and your professional. Like it's so important. And it's not to say in your professional don't put some personal things. Just stop using your family members. Like stop using your friends. We want to get I want to get like that guy up there. That's who I want to get because he's more likely to buy something from me. Because my friends and family are like, "Well, aren't you just gonna give it to me?" <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, we all have that. Yeah, that's that's why I liked it. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Right. Right. Oh, sure. yeah. That's true. I frankly have a hesitation posting some of Green's very local this coming yeah. weekend on my business pages because I think most of those people don't live locally. So if yeah. they're tourists, they're going to maybe come once every other year. That yeah. how, and, and it takes the focus off of what I'm trying to what do in my business. I am more likely to put on my personal page, although I have friends from all over the yeah. place, but I have a lot of local friends, and so hopefully they'll well, maybe that's my the way. business friends will ignore it, but the local yeah. friends might see it. But well, maybe sure. that's a way to do it because we're not you're not as worried about you share it on your personal great, yes, yeah, so and your friends see it and then it doesn't really affect your professional which is fine. Well it dilutes it. I dilutes I, yeah, I absolutely it and that's what I was trying to say about like separating the two, like you know, your political opinions shouldn't be on your professional page. Other than letting them know, of course, that most I'm I'm right there at Saturday Market of Choice. Yeah, sure, but that content. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. <laughs> just something on that. What I do with like my Facebook is you can put people in different categories, and I have anyone who's local. I've written local in there, and you can lock out anybody who's not local. You can post uh, something. That's so great. I'll share something, and I'll just put with my little locking mechanism just the local people. And that's all that sees it then. Oh. You can just do personal people. You can yeah. do just yeah. people who purchase from the market. So I'll have a bunch of little categories that every person is in that all kind of match up to different. That's, that's, that's on your personal page. Smart. 
both. Oh, both. 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 Yeah. I do it with personal people too because some I don't want my mom seeing some things that I post. Yeah. I don't want. <laughs> to, I don't want my mom seeing some things that I post. The same things with you know business. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sounds like I need to check in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, what was your address again? I just gained thirty-two new followers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what did I say about like your homework when I was talking about stalking other websites and all of that? Um, the other thing we brought up, start researching happenings. It can be in Portland, it can be in other places. Like, so what we were just talking about, start also researching events. Um, yeah, trends, and use those. So like, Carla, some of your stuff's more religious based, right? So. Is there a ch like a famous church or a website that does you know something? Start doing the app to them. Start yep. Yeah, see, start driving it. I think that's where social media gets a little bit inundated as well. Is that doing this isn't going to work? We need to do like this. You need to hone in on who actually is going to purchase your product. Finding that target audience. It's really important. I'm so curious, you or whoever uses social media, how much of an impact does it make in, in money in your business? Like, what is the percentage? Is it worth the time? Is it worth yes. Yes. I don't know how to say that. I know that's a little. But yes, if you are too weak, it's not going to make an impact or a big, significant one if you're kind of like every two weeks. like. Oh wow! Yeah. Look at this cool base I have. Like you, you need to to do it. Just do it regularly. Like, like at least once a week. At least. I would aim for twice to start. Like I think that's a pretty realistic. We can all manage twice. You know, maybe it's Monday morning. We don't feel like working yet. Sit down with your coffee and just put something clever. On and then maybe don't think about it again until Thursday. And the other thing is people, when people start like, you know, if I just like let that group test post just go, you know, it, whatever, so who cares that a couple people did, but I immediately went to their pages and then someone actually made a comment, so I commented back at them. Like, just like emailing, when someone emails you, a customer or something, and you let it just sit in your inbox for a week, like, how are you gonna expect to, to advance in that? No, you need it. Respond. So that's the same thing with social media. It's people have them like, holding in their hands, that people have this on them. And that's what ERT is so much about it, is that we're so linked to it. But that's what it is. They have it. They're they're right there. You write to them, they're gonna They want instant. You know, they want instant. We, we agree with it, but that's what, like that's what it is. You know? So that so yes, I would say most certainly. Um and I have some pretty darn successful friends who this is their life and it's their product is so crappy. Like I can't you know, I'm sorry, I love the pieces. They're selling like four hundred dollar dresses that like oh sorry. Um, but yeah. This, they did it all. Marketing. All with marketing. No storefront. It's a website and wow. Photos of their beautiful friends. Uh, yeah. Are they on Etsy too, or just through their website? No, no, just through their website. Mm -hmm. and yeah, they're the ones who bought the 20,000 followers as well. Okay. But they play off of, they use their friends. They use their friends' followers. They find their friends that have the most followers, feature them on their website. They, <laughs> they strongly abuse. They're beautiful friends, uh huh. Yep. <laughs> so that's kind of like a niche market. I'm not gonna say we can all do that as well, but they yeah, honestly, yeah, they're beautiful friends. Like, oh. <laughs> my niche has gone up since I started using Trisha Jack for <laughs> <laughs> It's true. But it's funny because I've always these friends that I have, uh, like my friend he won Survivor in like season six or something and then I don't even really know what he did after that. But I've yet to use him. And so I'm gonna, that's going to be my next, and I'll let you guys know how it goes. I'm going to start abusing their resources and see how that goes. Now how are you, and how, when you say you're going to abuse their resources, what are you, 
I'm going to be tagging them. I'm going to put photos of him that I have from when we were in third grade. <laughs> when he used to like sing rap to me in like middle school. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to use that. I'm going to start. Like, you know? And see what happens. Send him some. Oh, they just had a baby. I'm going to make a little onesie with one of my images on it and ask them to put it on the baby. Make sure. <laughs> it just feels so weird. Well, is it called sharing? Mostly, I mean, that's what I thought. <laughs> when I, what's that? I was just saying that that's, yes, it is sharing. I mean, I kind of thought that was the new way when you're on social media is to share other people's things, and it's just called sharing. But sometimes it's actually stealing. Well, no. <laughs> See, now I feel bad. Now I like that word. That's just what I call it. That's what it feels like to me, but... It is sharing is a nicer word. That's what it, the word I should be used. It's, um, <laughs> it's not taking anything. No, from you're not. No, you're just no, jumping no. on the back of yeah, their exposure. Yeah, sounds like you're okay. taking their product or something. Well, no, 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 if no, you're no, on no, the no, yeah. Yeah. so if you're on the platform, that's just part of the rules of the game. Anything that's out here, yeah, that's available. Yeah, okay. that's the that's how you play the game. That's how you play the game. Yeah, and I think. People like us in particular who are, we actually want to be out here. We, we want to be in front of the customers. We don't want to be sitting at home just in front of our computers. This is a little, it's harder for us. It's harder. Because it, it's so impersonal. It's, it's so impersonal. And it, I think that's, look, I'm like staring at my phone. It's sort of weird, <laughs> like object. Um, so it's going to be more of a hurdle for us to kind of break through this feeling of sharing or using it's tougher. We can do it. I know we can do it. We just have to do it with class. You know, crafty artists in the way. So I'm not a computer person. Yeah. Facebook. So if you like something and you share something, what's the difference between the two of them? You like something, it's like you're just telling the person that you like it. This but it goes out. Yeah, yeah some, it'll probably go so people will see, see that you liked this link and then they might click on not to see that you liked it. Sharing is actually like putting it on your page. Like, like taking whatever it is that you want it goes on your page and then say you share it with me, it'll go on my page. You're like, Jesse, you'll love this. And then it goes on my my page. And I can say like I can take it off my page and be like no, 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 I don't like that at all. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I think that's kind of sharing is much more visible. Yeah, a lot more visible than like. And 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 that's what I started with, like, and that is the hard thing about Facebook because you're not necessarily. I like what Lizzie said about using like certain groups or and maybe with using hashtags more, you can. Make sure the right people are seeing it, but just because you like share something or like something doesn't mean that everyone who follows you is going to see it. They used to, but Facebook is. Do you have to pay money for that? Yeah, they're a whole new beast, or they're just becoming more and more of a beast, I guess I should say. And that's why I was kind of saying, like, you guys don't know Instagram that well, and I'm happy that it's so easy to set it up. It's just an app that you can also uh, have on your own. Something about the visual aids, and there is a little bit of advertising on there, but it's nothing like Facebook. Well, it's like a thousand. Yeah. Visual, I mean, that's what we're selling, is whatever our visual art form is. It just seems, and that's where Twitter, even too, it's, you know, it's just words. I tend to glaze over the words. Um, I would really like to see you guys try it and see what you think. What was the app you were talking about? Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Instagram. It's an app. It's an app, yeah. Does Instagram have good tools for photo editing? Yes, a really nice, nice part about Instagram, right? So, well, we take a picture, but it's not a great picture. Before you post, oh, it gives you all these options to edit the photo, to even put like black and white, different kind of. You can make it look really good. Yeah. Yeah. People look really good on Instagram. All right, well, so I think we. I think we're about ready. All right, sorry, Thank guys. you. Thank you so much.